Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, welcome to our social sciences overview for this afternoon. Um, my name is Erica Padilla. I'm one of the associate directors of admissions here at the University of Rochester. Um, before I get started today, I just wanted to uh, share, uh, we know that this is a really difficult time for everybody. Um, we're all experiencing a lot of challenges that we've never experienced before. We're just happy to be here for you to be able to answer any questions and hopefully offer a little glimpse into the experience at the university. Um, first and foremost, congratulations on your admissions to the University of Rochester and to the class of 2024. Um, so today we'll give you an opportunity to connect with faculty and members of our social sciences department. Um, it's a great opportunity to also get some insight and get some of those questions answered. Um, this session, just so you're aware, ends 11, it's scheduled to end at 1.30. However, in the past, it's gone a little long, so there's a good opportunity that we may actually wrap up closer to two o'clock. Uh, in the interest of time, I know some of you may need to sign off at 1.30, it's absolutely fine. For those of you that are able to stay on until a quarter to two or a little thereafter, um, I encourage you to, since there will still be some really great information being shared. Um, I do have a quick PowerPoint to walk you through what to expect over the course of this session. Um, we are using a Zoom webinar, uh, which is a little different to the traditional Zoom. You'll see towards the bottom of the screen, um, a feature that says raise hand. Uh, when uh, I ask a question, if you would raise your hand, that just lets me know um, that you're actually participating in either the poll or the question just to get us started. I want to know if everybody can hear me today. If you could just raise your hand to let me know that you can hear me. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, and you can lower your hand. Um, right next to that, you'll see a feature that says Q&A. Um, for today's session, I encourage you to share any questions that you have that you'd like our panelists to have answered. Um, we're going to actually answer a lot of those questions live. I also have two colleagues with me here today, Patrick and Libby. They're here to assist with any questions we may not get to. Um, so feel free to post those in there. Um, you, will see, <clears throat> you will see also a chat feature that's been disabled for this session. Um, excellent. So to kind of get us started, um, I wanted to go through a sense of what the Rochester curriculum looks like. Uh, for our social sciences students. So there are three general divisions at the university, natural sciences, social sciences, and humanities. Every student, if you're majoring in the social sciences, will actually still have the opportunity to participate in the other two divisions. So you'll see here an example of a history major at the University of, um, at the university of Rochester participating in either clusters or <clears throat> perhaps a minor in another area of study. We do have a lot of areas that you can major in for the social sciences. We have a small group of students representing a variety of those today. Um, but as you can see, there are so many majors and minors that we can't possibly represent all of them. So I encourage you to join our class of 2024 sessions that are forthcoming, or also log into our Facebook page, get some of those questions answered, or follow up with an email. Um, our contact information for today's panel um, is listed here. I'll share this again later on towards the end of the session so that you have an opportunity to stay in touch with us. Um, and without further ado, the reason you really came to the session today, um, I'd like to have our panelists please introduce themselves um, and then we'll jump to questions right after that. Good morning, everyone. Or I, say, I guess I should say good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Rick Cardo. I'm the faculty director of the undergraduate business program at the U of R. Um, I've been teaching in our program for about 10 years. Well, I guess nine years in the undergraduate program, 10 years in the graduate program. And my research interests are in the area of price wars and manager decision making. Um, excited to answer any questions you guys have. Thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Gerald Gam. I'm a professor both in the Department of History. Hey, Pablo and the Department of Political Science. Uh, I served 13 years as chair of the Department of Political Science, and I serve currently as the undergraduate uh, coordinator in the Political Science Department. Uh, what else? I also serve as the university's NCAA faculty athletic representative, so work a lot with student athletes, and sit in a bunch of other committees, and advise a lot of incoming students 
Um, I love teaching. Uh, I'm teaching a seminar in the fall on urban politics and urban history and another seminar, another course called Argument in Political Science, where we look at the American uh, political system. Uh, research, uh, I'm looking at how parties have changed over the last 30 or 40 years, political parties, uh, with the rise of social issues and looking at the institutional development of Congress and also looking at state legislatures. Um, most memorable thing about me, we have 21 chickens right now, so we're not gonna run out of eggs uh, during the current crisis. Hi everyone, my name is Professor Pablo Sierra. I am a faculty member in the history department and I'm also director of undergraduate studies there. This is my seventh year at the university now. And I can uh, assure you that this is a fantastic institution for you to join. Um, I would say that my research interests are, are focused on the experiences of people of African descent in Latin America and specifically in Mexico, which is an area of um, research that's really exploding right now in importance and is a federal census. It's now taking, car taking uh, account of that population. And I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you may have about history and some of the many courses that we offer here at the university. Hi, my name is Lily Hutton. I'm a sophomore from Albany, New York, and I'm majoring in international relations with minors in history and Italian. Um, outside the classroom, I'm involved in our student government and club and intramural sports. Hello, my name is Leif. Um, I'm a senior. I double major in economics and political science, and um, I'm from the little tiny town of Livingston Manor, New York, in the Catskill Mountains. I'm outside of the classroom. Um, I spent time working with Lily in student government. Um, I play the drums, and I'm in a couple of uh, vocal ensembles on campus, and I'm really excited to answer your questions today. Hi, everyone. I'm Grace. I'm also from Albany, New York, and I'm finishing up my freshman year. I'm majoring in public health, specifically on the health, behavior, and society track, and I'm double minoring in psychology and brain and cognitive sciences. I'm also um, in an accelerated master's degree program, which is called the GRADE program through the Warner School of Education. So if you have any questions about an accelerated master's degree, I am here to answer them. Um, outside of the classroom, I am involved in student government as well. Um, I'm involved in some environmental sustainability organizations, and I'm also in Greek life. Hi, all. I'm Devin. I'm a business major, a senior from Williamsport, Pennsylvania. I'm a business major. I do, I'm on the entrepreneurship track. Um, I'm also a history minor. Uh, outside the classroom, I perform research in both the humanities and social science departments. Uh, I'm on the rowing team, and I also do improv comedy. Hi, everyone. My name is Jess. I am a senior from Rochester, New York. Um, I'm a major in psychology with minors in political science and French. And outside of the classroom, I'm involved in psychology research as well as a mental health task force on campus. Excellent, thank you, everybody. Um, again, I wanna remind all of our attendees to please post your questions in the Q&A. We're gonna start getting to those in just one second. Um, but before, I wanted to ask our faculty if you wouldn't mind just speaking a little bit more in your own words about, about your department, your major, uh, what makes it unique or stand out, and, um, uh, or any research perhaps that you've been involved in. For our students, if you could just share a little bit more about um, your connections to your department, what drove you to choose that as your major, or any unique experience that you've had in your department that you'd like to share. Okay, I'll kick it off. Um, I think one of the things that's unique about the business program is just our diversity of courses. Um, in, our, in our BS major, we have five different tracks, and those are accounting, business analytics, um, entrepreneurship, marketing, and finance. So we have wide breadth of courses that we offer in those. We also have a BA uh, major, which requires a second major. So it's really made to, to pair with another major on campus. Uh, in addition to that, we have the business minor. Um, we're also STEM certified in terms of our major. Uh, and it's not necessarily unique to our department, but I think our department does a pretty good job in terms of providing um, sort of concentric spheres of, of advising to students. We have professional advisors in addition to faculty track advisors for each of our specific tracks. Um, and I guess I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Hi, Gerald Gam again. So the political science department supports majors in political science and also in international relations. 
Um, what I would tell you first is it's a department that takes research incredibly seriously. We've been ranked um, among the top 10 or 15 political science departments in the country going back the last 50 years. So we attract really, really strong faculty, really strong graduate students, and really strong and interested undergraduates. So we have a very strong tradition in research and teaching. What makes us um, special, I think, because there are other top political science departments in the country, is that all the professors who are doing uh, the research are the same people who are doing the advising and the teaching. So you're gonna be taught by people who are really engaged as classroom teachers, really engaged as advisors, and doing um, cutting edge work in the field. Um, how do our majors work? Uh, if you're a political science major or an international relations major, we want you to do two tools of analysis. The tools could be quantitative, they could be what we call formal theory, which is sort of abstract reasoning, or they could be reading and writing. Uh, all of these we regard as important tools uh, for studying political science and international relations. Uh, the center of either major is what we call the core track. So we have a choice of tracks, five for political science majors, three for international relations majors. Um, an example track would be elections in government. A different track could be war violence and cooperation or data and modeling. Like you pick what you wanna do most of your work in, that becomes your core track. And then the rest of your major, you do a little bit of work outside your core track. If you're an international relations major, you also have to learn a language and spend a semester studying abroad at least once we get past this current crisis. Um, what else can I tell you? We also have really good internships. We have internships in Washington, D.C. on Capitol Hill. We have internships in Europe at the House of Commons and in the European Parliament in, in Brussels. Uh, we have local internships in the district attorney's office and the mayor's office and the public defender's office. Um, and then students will just identify internships on their own. We're a department that also just encourages all sorts of independent study and research and have an honors program. And I've gone on too long, so I'm going to stop. But that's political science and international relations. Hi, everyone. This is Professor Sierra again. Um, if I had to say anything about the history major, it would be that what's really distinctive is how closely you get to work with uh, researchers who happen to be your professors. In other words, you're not just um, going to a big lecture hall, you're actually sitting down in a smaller seminar setting and then in ideas, really your own ideas about a given research project, a given historical topic, writing papers, and then those leading researchers who are publishing actively then get to comment on your papers. So something that's distinctive about our major, we require two writing courses which are revise and resubmit courses or W courses. And again, this is a really special opportunity for you to devise, uh, design an original research project, find your own sources, and then ask a leading figure in medieval history, for instance, what he or she thinks about your research. And you get to work on it and develop this project over one semester or in some cases two. That is really unique. I was fortunate enough to go to a large uh, research university and then a smaller research university for undergrad and graduate and that combination that we have here at Rochester is really really unique and special. The history major consists of 10 courses but we strongly encourage our students to pursue languages, to pursue independent study opportunities and then to do research with the faculty themselves through something called the hour program which can be um, uh, which can earn you credits or can earn you a small stipend. So I'll stop at that and pass on. So hi again, I'm an international relations major and possibly a history double major right now, a minor. Um, I chose international relations because I enjoyed politics throughout high school and going into college. And what made me choose international relations over poli sci is probably the study abroad component and the language requirement. So the difference between the two is that international relations majors are required to study abroad and they're required to take two courses of a language, um, which has been really exciting just to learn another. I think it helps for future career opportunities just to have some sort of knowledge of a language under your belt. And also, hopefully I'll be studying abroad in the spring, if not, um, probably the summer, another year. Um, but I'm excited to answer more questions. 
So I think for me, I, I had known for a couple of years before coming to college that I wanted to study economics and political science. I think that the two um, are very closely intertwined in a lot of ways, and I was, I was just excited to, to dive into that. Um, but I can tell you why, why I stayed in those majors when I, when I came to U of R and throughout my, my four years at U of R. Um, first of all, the, not only do professors do really engaging and exciting research that's just they're doing groundbreaking stuff on campus they're also incredible educators um, which is something i think pretty unique um, about at, at least those two departments but i've certainly heard um, from friends about other ones too um, and uh, so it's it's a joy to sit through a lot of professors classes um, another thing uh, like professor gam mentioned there's a lot of opportunities to get involved outside of the classroom in um, research and internships. Um, I think I've done six or seven different internships now um, related to the political science field between starting at U of R and now uh, graduating in just a couple of weeks. Um, and so I got to go abroad and do the internship in um, London at the House of Commons last semester. It was really exciting. I got to do some around Rochester. I did one in Washington. I did some in New York State government. Um, and so those were all opportunities that that were uniquely presented through through studying in this department. Kind of similarly, I came in to the U of R wanting to be a public health major. I was involved in a lot of sort of political and community engagement in high school and in the greater Albany area. And I knew that that was something I was really passionate about. But in high school, you're not really taught public health, right? Like you're taught chemistry, you're taught biology maybe you're taught psychology, but you aren't really taught about the intertwined relationship between all of them. So I was really curious to see if what in my head public health was really kind of came across the same way in a class. And it absolutely did. Um, I think all the professors, like people have touched on before, are very, very devoted into what they're doing. You know, majority of our um, we're a tier one research institution, right? So majority of our staff are involved actively in research. And there's just so many aspects to get involved more than just sitting in a lecture hall. That I think I was personally surprised about um, coming from high school. I'd never done research and I still haven't done research myself, but just I can feel being surrounded by professors and peers who are doing research and are so actively invested in what they are majoring in. Um, like for me with public health, I know that what I'm learning is very current. And I think that for social sciences, a lot of majors are current and stuff that are happening happening in real time. It's not something you're reading from the past, it's something you're experiencing. And I think it's really interesting and engaging the way that our curriculum allows for students and for research to be so engaged in what's happening today. Yeah, that's exactly right. I came from, uh, I started my, major in optical engineering and had a minor in business and decided I really liked the business department so much. Not that the optics department, it's phenomenal, but I was, I wanted to talk to people. And with that, you have professors that are, graduate professors are teaching undergraduate class, classes from that Simon School of Business that we have. It's, and you get this education that, you know, these people have taught here 30, 40 years sometimes, and the, the knowledge they can impart onto you is, is phenomenal. Uh, on that note, also, the research, they are all still doing research, and these are people who are very well connected, who know a lot, and I believe I saw a question in the, um, in the group chat that, how do you get started with research? Well, the first time it kind of just fell into my lap, it was in the history department, uh, one of the classes mm -hmm. called Speaking Stones. They have a, a class where we we go into Mount Hope Cemetery, which is a nearby cemetery, and we do research on who's buried there, what were their lives. Um, and then getting you know, a taste of that, I wanted to pursue my own research. And so I did in the Department of Business. And uh, the, the faculty are just so willing to help, and it's just phenomenal. Yeah, I think everyone, everyone pretty much covered it, um, but to speak to the psychology major specifically, I think something that I really enjoyed about the major is you can make it whatever you want. So I actually transferred to Rochester from a small liberal arts school, um, and while I was applying to universities, I thought that the only way to get a flexible curriculum where I could take what I wanted, engage in small classes, hands-on learning, all of that was to go to a small liberal arts university. Um, 
And I learned that that is most definitely not the case. There are many schools, um, including Rochester, that have very, very flexible curriculum that allow you to kind of do whatever you want. So I think a really good example is my semester last semester. Um, I was doing an independent study where I created a grassroots organization. Um, I was doing research with um, a psychology professor and taking a 10 person seminar course with my PI. Um, and all of those things counted as electives towards my major. Um, and it was really interesting because it was all very hands-on. It was all very, like Grace, Grace said, was very current, it was very relevant. Um, and it has helped me kind of guide my path in terms of what I wanna do after graduation. So I think that's just kind of a testament to um, what you can make your college experience at Rochester because you can make it whatever you want, which is really special. Um, thank you. I've actually seen a lot of questions pop through uh, related to research. Our attendees, can I see a show of hands of who's interested in participating in research? Excellent. Oh, there's quite a few of you. Excellent. Um, so I want to ask our faculty just how easy is it to get involved in research within, within your department, your program? So within business, I would say the best way to go about uh, getting involved in research is for really for students to take the initiative and build the relationships with the faculty members. Um, you know, research is, is something that's obviously very important to our faculty. And so, you know, involving undergraduates in that process, while sometimes formalized and sort of generic in nature makes sense, the best way I've seen it work is really for the relationship to be built, probably through taking some courses with that faculty member. Um, you know, the other things we do in business that are sort of related to this idea of getting involved in research is we do have a fair amount of independent studies where um, an undergraduate will just sort of build their own project that's guided by and supported by a faculty member. Um, and then we also have several experiential courses where students would work in a real life project associated with um, you know, the business community. And then finally through uh, support of just internships so getting out there in the summer and experiencing something firsthand. Um, so my answer would be similar to Rick's. Uh, for many students, the best way to get involved in research is to do an independent study. And the best way to do an independent study is to take courses and see what you become interested in, see what you're learning. And when you take a course, ask yourself, what directions would I wanna go in from this material? What additional things would I wanna learn? And that becomes the basis for a research project, it becomes the basis for an independent study, and as Rick points out, it becomes the basis for establishing a relationship with the professor because you can say to that person, I really, really like this material, could I do more of it with you? So that's one way to do research. Another way to do research is simply to take a seminar. We offer lots of small courses in all of our departments, and generally those small courses have research and writing built into them, so that's a way to do research. Um, and then sometimes students would be interested in working with one of us. I have research projects I'm working on and have students, undergraduate students working with me as research assistants, helping me collect data and analyze the data. And for them, I think it's really interesting. And I think they come to understand the research experience. And for me, it's incredibly helpful. And I'm learning from them at the same time. And then, of course, we have internships and all sorts of other experiences. Um, in addition to our honors seminar and other ways students can do research. Yes, absolutely. I'd second everything that Rick and Gerald have said, without a doubt. I also want to recommend that all of you incoming students consider something that perhaps hasn't been an option to you before, and that is absolutely go visit your professors during office hours. We are required to be there for you. And I have to say, personally, there's nothing more gratifying than having a student or maybe even someone who hasn't been in one of my classes walk in and say, hi, Professor Sierra, I'm really interested in Latin American history. Is there a particular kind of author you think I should follow or a project you think I could develop? Because those one-on-one -on -one conversations, which make this institution unique, are typically the ones that lead to research projects of your own. In history, at least, we have an honors program, which you apply to, you build your own research proposal and then over the course of a year or a year and a half you actually do it you go to archives you go to museums you build a database of information for yourself or whatever the media might be and then you design that project and present it at the end at the honors colloquium so absolutely undergraduate research is essential to what we do 
in history and in the social sciences. And again, it's one of the distinctive features of this institution. This will not happen at many, many other uh, universities and colleges. Here, it's kind of baked into the fabric of the U of R, and I strongly urge you to, to make the best of that opportunity. Um, a couple of you have alluded to uh, double majoring, Lily, um, <laughs> as one. Uh, there was a question that came through about how, how easy is it to double major um, if anybody's thinking about doing it or has already done it and speak to a little, a little bit more to that. Yeah, so as for the double majoring, mine is just sort of, I was actually planning last night all my courses for the next couple semesters, and I realized that I can do it. Like, I have classes to fill. Um, the reason I chose Rochester, probably the main one, is the curriculum. I had a variety of interests going into college, and I wanted to make sure that all of those were fulfilled. And in high school, I didn't like having to take classes that I wasn't excited about. I'm not a huge math and science person, um, so I wasn't excited to learn about those, but now I've found that every class that I've taken, I've chosen, and I'm really excited to learn about that topic. Um, as for double majoring, I think if you just sort of plan for it, it's definitely possible, but like I just said, you can also not plan for it and have it be possible as well. Um, it's just taking, making sure you're planning out your courses and a lot of them fit together. Um, as for research, I found that it's really easy to get involved in research, and that goes for pretty much every student that I've talked to. Um, I'm involved in a research opportunity with the libraries right now, and so what I'm doing is documenting all the portraits on campus and sort of just noting the racial and gender discrepancies between them. So we have a lot of white males on our campus, and I'm trying to help change that. Um, and while we think that there's a decent amount of females, they actually tend to be um, a lot of the same person, which is Susan B. Anthony. Um, so I'll be continuing that and just hopefully getting some portraits made and, and change how our, our, our campus looks. Um, but it's a really cool opportunity that honestly kind of fell in my lap in a meeting. Um, and I've also had a professor just ask the class who wants to be involved in research and whoever wanted to just went to our office hours after. So it, it's simpler than you think. Um, when I came in, I, I was worried that you'd have to go and sort of ask a ton of people and get a ton of knows but it seems like for the most part professors really just want your help um, and want you to learn and what you're interested in. I would totally agree with what, what Lily is saying. Um, first in terms of double majoring. In social sciences and humanities double majoring is really common um, at the University of Rochester. Um, it's uh, more difficult to schedule if you're doing natural sciences just because the course requirement to fulfill one natural sciences major is generally larger than the course requirements to fulfill a social sciences or humanities major, which is why you see a lot of those social sciences and humanity ma humanities majors doing double majors and, um, and sometimes less so, or maybe just a major and a minor for, for natural sciences students. Um, I was, for economics and political science, it was totally doable for me. It felt like a pretty normal course load I had throughout. Um, in terms of um, research, uh, again, I, I agree with what everyone else has, has been saying so far. It's not difficult to get involved in. Um, and, and I guarantee that in each and every one of you that are, that are watching this today um, are, are fully qualified to get involved in research on campus. This isn't something that's like lofty and for people that are smarter than you. No, this is something that you can absolutely get involved in. And, and early on, I had people that were living on my freshman hall during their first or second semester that were getting involved in research. So um, I think that's really exciting. Um, a few questions came through um, about things like graduate school, um, career paths for some of our graduates. Um, I wanted to ask our faculty if we could just speak a little bit more to just common outcomes for some of our students, grad school or um, whatever career trajectories perhaps our students are pursued. So I would encourage everybody to um, visit the Gwen Green Career Center's Career Outcomes Dashboard uh, on U of R site. So they do a pretty good job of tracking where students go, what job titles they take, what regions they go. Um, go to and what schools they go on to attend. So I think for business, um, I could be mistaken, but I want to say about 30% of our students go on to graduate school. Um, and the vast majority, you know, go on to work. Um, we do have some, some pathways carved into the curriculum for four plus one programs. So if a student wanted to 
finish their undergraduate degree in business and go on to the graduate school um, through those specialized tracks. We have some mechanisms to do that. Um, but in general, students go on, I, I want to say the average salary was about 54000 last year for business majors. Um, the other tricky part, I would just caution about that, is that you know because of all the double majors, it's sometimes challenging to figure out exactly you know, sort of what a student is going to go do in their career and which major sort of, you know, created that opportunity. Um, so I'll leave it at that and answer more questions. Uh, for political science and international relations, uh, a large number of our students do go on to graduate school directly from college. Uh, many of them will go on to get PhDs. Uh, some will go to public policy schools. Some will go to uh, international affairs programs. Uh, we have a student this year who just won uh, something uh, very distinguished called the Pickering Fellowship. So he's going on to an international affairs program and basically uh, the fellowship sets him up for a career in diplomacy. Um, lots of our students go on to law school. Uh, so if I were thinking, what do our majors do? They become lawyers, they become teachers, they become diplomats, they go into public health. The great thing about social science majors, in general, whatever the major is, is if we're doing our job well, you're learning how to read well, you're learning how to analyze data and analyze material, you're learning how to write well and express yourself well. These are skills that you can apply to virtually any profession. And so if I look at our most successful majors through the years, if I look at just our average majors through the years, they've gone on to do everything. We even have dentists and doctors in the mix. Um, as long as you're taking your coursework seriously and you're doing well, um, you're gonna prepare yourself for a lot of different fields. And if you do all those things and take pre-med courses, you can even go to medical school. Yes, absolutely, I agree. Um, history majors end up um, with a huge array of, of career choices, just to, to name a few. Um, Cindy Molina, a couple years ago, uh, the history major decided to compete for a very prestigious position at JP Morgan Chase, beat out all the finance majors that she was competing with nationally. Why? Because she had those soft skills. She knew how to analyze data. She knew how to make a persuasive argument. She knew how to position herself in relation to a group and lead a discussion, right? So these are the kind of things that history majors do, and it can lead you into banking. It can lead you into marketing, certainly into higher education, and also uh, into law. So the, the, the gamut that we have is actually quite vast. And in response to some of the questions about double majoring, again, we encourage your students to be as well-rounded as possible. And if that means, uh, if that means taking history along with business, along with political science, or perhaps uh, adapting it to a more humanistic study that requires learning French or Italian, then of course that only makes you a much more competitive candidate on the job market. So really, the sky's the limit when you're dealing with this kind of social scientific training that we're providing for you. A question came through students about work-life balance. Um, how do you manage your academics with uh, just extracurricular activities and having a life outside of the classroom? Um, who wants to take that one? Jess. Yeah, I think um, something that I really love about Rochester is that the students are very passionate about what they do and that extends beyond academics. Um, we have over 300 clubs, I believe, at this point. The number keeps going up because students keep creating new clubs. Um, but you have so many opportunities to get involved with things that you thought you were interested in or you wanted to try for the first time. So I know for myself, um, I am a psychology major and a double minor. Um, I am involved in a few performing arts groups. I perform research. Um, I'm a Meridian, I'm a tour guide, which is why I'm here. Um, and I've been able to balance all of that because, you know, everyone here understands that you might want to try a lot of different things, but some are your priorities, some you're kind of just taking little tastes of, and you can balance it how you'd like. Um, but I know that I've had the opportunity to still engage in everything that I was interested in in high school um, and try new things and have time to relax with my friends, to study as much as I want. Um, but the one thing I would encourage you all to do, regardless of where you end up, is be aware of how much you can handle, um, because it's very easy to say, there are so many opportunities in university, I want to try all of them. 
and that it feels like you have no work-life balance, but it is definitely something that you can achieve if you're aware of how much you can take on, um, which is why I've been able to engage in all the things I have. Yeah, awareness is super important coming here. The, the best thing you learn at college is time management. And when you have a job on the side, as well as a workload, you need to um, be able to manage that correctly. I think most of us in this group have um, probably worked two, maybe even three jobs during our time here and sometimes concurrently. Uh, so realizing I need to get this work done before I go to work uh, and I don't procrastinate um, is something that actually can be very beneficial, uh, keep you ahead. And um, yeah, I found it's, it's very helpful. Follow that by saying that although so many students are involved with so many things, I think it's very low pressure. I don't want any of you to be like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to come onto campus and join 35 organizations and major in one thing and minor in two things. Because I know for me listening to that, my heart starts racing and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't have, I only have 24 hours in the day. There's no way I can do that all. But it's very maintainable. So I just wanted to reiterate the fact that so many students are involved in so many things, but it's not because any of us are superheroes by any means, <laughs> at least speaking for myself, I know that I'm certainly not. It's just that the way that the campus life goes, um, all students and faculty and staff understand that there is this balance between academics and extracurriculars, and it's very easy and manageable to be able to involve, be involved in things that you're interested in, in addition to being able to getting the work done that you need to get done. So low pressure. Um, and in the interest of time, I just want to recognize it's, uh, it's already uh, 1.37, so uh, I just wanted to ask our panelists if you wouldn't mind just sharing uh, a final thought or something you haven't shared yet, perhaps a, a tip or a suggestion for our new members for the class of 2024, um, and if our faculty wouldn't mind starting us off, it'd be great. So I would say uh, give the University of Rochester a shot. Come to campus, um, check it out, and when you get here, um, explore. Take advantage of all the all the resources, all the great sort of networking opportunities, and uh, and see what the future holds for you. Yeah, I would say this is a truly, truly special place. Um, and others on the panel have already alluded to this, but I don't know another institution that does such a good job combining the strengths of a small college with the strengths of a major research university. So you can find lots of other places out there that will tell you they're small and you're going to get to know your professors and you'll have research opportunities. I don't know that there are other small places out there that are gonna provide the wealth of opportunities Rochester will. And you're gonna find other great research universities, um, but ask yourself is at that other research university, are the best researchers also teaching me and advising me? At Rochester, the answer is yes. And I think it really, really shapes the place. Um, a student just asked in the Q and A, what do I do if I enter undeclared? And, and the truth is I say to my advisees every August, uh, my favorite major to advise is an undeclared person because you're at Rochester and Rochester is a place that will say to you in your first semester, what are you interested in? And then when you give that answer, that will shape everything you study. You will have no requirements beyond studying what you're interested in. No core requirements, no gen ed requirements. And you're going to build a curriculum out of what you're interested in. And that is a really exciting thing to be able to do in college. And it will shape all the work you do outside the classroom, too, because ideally the co-curricular activities you're doing also will be growing out of your interests. So that's why I would say to come to Rochester. Hi, yes, I would say have as much fun as you possibly can, right? Uh, we have a thing called garbage plates here. Uh, the garbage plate is a local delicacy. I'm going to let the undergrads explain what that is, but it's a thing. You can only get it here. You should try it here. What Professor Gam said is absolutely on point. What should you take your first semester? The things that you are passionate about, the things that you are curious about. You want to take a course in optics? Do it. You want to try to develop a, a Latin American studies independent track? Do it. We're not going to stop you. So be assertive. Uh, be engaging, be creative, and we'll help you get there. We'll help you build the career that you want to build. So I'm actually a vegetarian, so I've only had one garbage plate and it wasn't really a real one, so someone else is going to have to take that one. Um, but as for my last feedback, I would say another big part of why I chose to come to Rochester is the people 
and every student that I've met and that goes for faculty as well are really passionate about one or more things and they want you they want to share that with you and tell you and it's really cool to just talk to your friends and your classmates and they're just so excited about what they're learning about um, and I didn't find that in high school uh, that everyone was really passionate about something and I'm really glad that when I came here I was able to pursue what I wanted to but also see that people are pursuing things that they're interested in and really excited about it. Yeah, I, I, I totally second everything that everyone's said so far. Maybe not the garbage plate. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, um, yeah, you gotta, you gotta try it at least once. Um, maybe not a second time. Um, no, the, I, I've never experienced another group of people in my life like those I, I've, I've been around for the last few years at the University of Rochester. Um, I always say that the, the students here are, are passionately curious, um, which means that, you know, when, when you're in high school, being the nerdy kid is never cool. You never want to be, you never want to be the nerdy kid. At U of R, like, that's about as cool as you can be. Um, someone who's just, like, excited to learn stuff and talk about stuff and share ideas um, and branch out and explore new things. And, and, you know, that Rochester curriculum is really, really helpful for that. And I know I've taken classes that are like way outside of um, what my studies are. Right now I'm taking a geology class and it's like one of the coolest things I've ever done. Um, and, and so, you know, coming here, you, you really get the opportunity to, to branch out on so many levels. And that doesn't mean that everyone's like a snooty academic or anything. No, it means that we're all just like excited to, to learn stuff and keep an open mind about how the world works. And that's really exciting. Yeah, going off that, I definitely say to focus and understand your uncertainty and be okay with that, that this is a big decision. And it doesn't have to be so easy as like automatically knowing exactly what you want. Um, and uncertainty is a good thing. The University of Rochester is really special because like people were saying, uncertainty is encouraged. It's okay that you don't know exactly what you want to do. It's okay that you don't know exactly what you want to take and the, the freedom to be able to grow and expand your mindset and your interests over the four years is something that I think is really, really incredible and something that can easily be taken for granted. But so congratulations on getting into the U of R. It really is a big accomplishment. And I think that this is a good home in some place that hopefully you will enjoy as much as we have. Uh, I will assume the position of official garbage plate liaison. Um, I have tried almost every restaurant in Rochester has their own version of it, and it's just phenomenal. It's like 3,000 calories, but that's not what you're thinking about when you're eating it. It's just so good. Uh, Max salad, home fry, you got your meat, your meat sauce, like onions, mustard, killer. Um, you got to try them, and they're cheap. So like, and there's restaurants that are open until like 4 a.m., so you're in the library or whatever, and I'm hungry. Um, anyways, that, totally try garbage plate. On the other note, uh, orientation week, it's two weeks long, or a week long, and, and even that week after it. Leave your door open. Um, meet the people in, on your hall, uh, because they are some of the coolest people, uh, to, and you've heard that from everyone in this panel. The people who go to Rochester are why I think Rochester is the greatest. Um, yeah, enough said. Well, I'm glad that Devin will be the official garbage plate liaison because I'm a fake Rochesterian. I've never had a garbage plate. Um, so I think speaking as someone who did the admissions process twice, it's really easy to get kind of tangled up in all of the nitty gritty details, you know, which school has better food, the statistics, the, you know, the dorm rooms, all of that good stuff. But I think it's really important to to really consider what you want out of your college career, um, both academically, socially, memories, all of that good stuff. And when you're making a decision, because I know for me, I was making the decision up until the last five minutes, my first time around, because I just didn't know. Um, and I think it's really important to just kind of close your eyes and think, okay, where do you see yourself? Do you see yourself you know, among those people that you walked by during your campus tour or joining those clubs, all of that good stuff. So I would really just say go with your gut. Um, and if your gut isn't correct, you can always transfer and you'll find your home. And I know um, my my transition to U of R was seamless. And I think that's a, just a really strong testament to everything that everybody else has already said in terms of the really strong community we have here, um, both students and faculty and staff. 
um, and just the possibilities that you can, you know, you can engage in here. Um, so I'm very glad I transferred, but kind of just clear all that out of your head and just go with your gut and I'm sure you'll be fine. And hopefully your gut is Rochester. Who knows? <laughs> I want to thank our panelists um, right now. Uh, can I see a show of hands um, if you're seeing right now a listing of all email addresses for panelists today? Fantastic. Um, so 40 minutes does fly by. Um, so we encourage you to please stay in touch with us if we can help with any questions. Um, also, if, if you were inspired by today's session, you had some additional questions. I wanna remind everybody that we do have some additional virtual events coming up. Um, a couple have been referenced already. The Green Center, uh, which is our career center, is a wonderful resource and certainly a session that I highly recommend participating in. Uh, our research panel that's coming up in the next few days is another wonderful opportunity. Um, but feel free to join any of these events. And again, thank you so much for joining us today. Congratulations on your admissions to the University of Rochester, and everybody, please stay safe. See you soon on campus.